Drama indeed here on a Thursday night in the tournament. Let's go to San Jose and show you the finish of that one. Utah is at the line. They lead by three. There's nine seconds left as you look at Michael Doliak. Let's go courtside to Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery. They had put Jackson in Stanford to give it away. They just couldn't get coordinated. Michael Doliak, one of only two remaining starters in the game for Utah. And he has made all the clutch free throws down the stretch. Utes by five. Mosley. Utah has gotten over the hump. In their third try under Rick Majerus, the Utes advance to the Elite Eight. Terrific comeback by Stanford. They tied it on a three-pointer in the final seconds of regulation by Brevin Knight to force overtime. But then enormous credit to the group of youths who played in the overtime without Van Horn, without Caton, without Hansen, overcoming major obstacles. The youths win by five. Their 14th straight win. Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Brevin Knight of Stanford, 27 points and nine assists. And Michael Doliak making many key free throws for Utah down the stretch, 16 points and six rebounds. The Utes will meet the winner of the game between Kentucky and St. Joseph's, which comes your way next. From San Jose, here's Pat O'Brien. Send everybody out to San Antonio where our other overtime game is underway in overtime, 4.15 left. Clemson leads 75-72, courtside with Tim Ryan and Al McGuire. Charles Thomas will be at the line for Minnesota. Third personal on Terrell McIntyre. Clemson leads by three on the three-pointer from their team leader, Greg Buckner, the junior from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Charles Thomas at the line for Minnesota. Charles Thomas is big time for the foul line, 79%. Now let's go back just a few minutes here. You see the break on that. Missed free throw. This is going into overtime. It's five seconds left. They broke away from the foul shot. Made both of them. Charles Thomas made them both. Now what happened there? Buckner broke down the court after the miss by Quincy Lewis. And it was Tony Christie at the buzzer forcing overtime for Clemson. He's doomed. That movie was doomed. He couldn't make a shot all game. Every shot he put up was perfect. Merle Cole who shoots those at 36%. 10 points in the game for Cole, the senior. Perfect form by Cole. Four-point lead, Tigers. 3.45 to go in the first overtime. Jacobson. Forced that three-pointer. Rebounded by Weidman. Weidman's playing the game of his life underneath. It's a big space seater under there, but he's bringing down the rebound. McIntyre driving. McIntyre got away with a walk that time. Jacobson hot from three earlier. Now four of ten for Minnesota from three-point range. Buckner who just hit the three. Starts to drive. His pull-up for two. Buckner will carry the team on his shoulders. Great. Buckner. Six-point lead. We talked about the leadership of Bobby Jackson and Greg Buckner. It's Buckner's turn to shine right now. Jackson with the ball. 2.50. Remaining first overtime. John Thomas. Courtney James pulls his way in and hits. Courtney James. He's been missing those shots during regulation. Seven points for him. He averages 8-3 a game. Four-point lead Clemson. The four seeds from the ACC in that large entry. Right, number 14 in the country, McIntyre driving, gets it back again, misses from short range, and Jackson rebounds. Jackson will blow by if you move out of the post there. James is taking too much post position. Jackson for Jacobson, lots of room to shoot, won't go for him. 
Suddenly cold to Sam Jacobson. Rebound Jake. Weidman. Jacobs sh shoots better when someone's in his face. He was wide open and all alone. Four-point game, Clemson. Minnesota 29 and 3, the top seeds in the Midwest rank, number three in the country. Ah, uh -uh, they're making a little mistake here, I think, and I'm not second guessing anybody. It's a little too soon to go for the clock. Ah, go ahead and second guess it. No, I don't like the second guess. <laughs> I make my statement before they do what they do. A little bit too soon. Three point try from Code off the mark. Rebound Thomas, John Thomas. Jackson got to penetrate. Take him, he's going to roll away. Jackson off the Cold glass. Yeah. What a Cold shot. Yeah. 29 points for Bobby Jackson. He scored every possible way. Two-point game again. Clemson, 80-78. to 78. 110 to go in the first overtime. Bucks can go down low in the post. That's where you're excellent at. Go, Jamel. McIntyre. Liz Buckner working the outside on the perimeter. McIntyre, he drives. Got the shot off, grabbed by Minnesota. Jackson comes out. Jackson, even the numbers aren't right, he's going all the way. Nobody near him. Tied up at a little too soon, a little too soon. 31 for Bobby Jackson. Tied at 80, under a minute. Minnesota going to get the ball back, so no matter what happens, they're going to get a shot. McIntyre, watched by Charles Thomas. Weidman. His pass. Intended inside for Buckner. They're off the foot. They want, to, they want to get the ball in the Buckner, but that time he was gone. He's very fortunate it went off the foot. Clemson ball, 28.6 to go, first overtime. Clem Haskins signals timeout. 18 seconds on the shot clock, so you got a spread of about 10 seconds. Plenty of time. Bobby Jackson, he looks like the game just started. His facial expression never changes. He's so poised, so relaxed. Plus, he's playing with four fouls, but now he knows it's now or never, so he's not pussyfooting around. When he came in originally off the four fouls in the late in the second half, he was pussyfooting around. Tied at 80. Now the 20s are gone for both teams. Minnesota still with their fulls. Clemson with one. Jackson has gone 12 and a half minutes now with four fouls on him. Minnesota comes out man to man, not covering the man, throwing the ball in. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Now Jacobson comes up and covers Buckner. Into the corner, McIntyre's pass stolen. Not a good feed from McIntyre. Alert Minnesota play. Tied at 80, 13 seconds counting down. Coach Clem says, go easy, do it yourself. Jackson, wait another two seconds. Now do your thing, Jackson. Do your thing, baby. Code all over him. Pulls up the jumper. Won't go. Oh! Into the second overtime. Into the second overtime. We're tied at 80 at the Alamo Dome. Minnesota and Clemson. We'll be right back. Into the overtime. Bobby Jackson takes it down to about two seconds on the clock. Put it up. Just caught the back rim. So here we go into the second overtime. It's still to come from the West. St. Joe's in Kentucky. From here, Iowa State and UCLA. Iowa State and UCLA were twice out here getting ready to come out. Twice they had to go back to the locker room. Jackson, winner in the ball game now for Minnesota. Charles Thomas. Courtney James and Quincy Lewis. Winner. Jump in and out. James on the rebound. James wants to go up. Off the glass. No drop for him. Rebound by Lewis. Good. Foul on Minnesota. Code caught. No foul code, in there, right. I think. So the basket counts. Foul on Code. Two-point lead, Minnesota. Minnesota, uh, Minnesota's showing their space seat is down low. Then Lewis makes his last recovery, goes in, can get three. Another look at it. Weidman and Cole go out for Clemson. Uh, Weidman, uh, Weidman comes in, pardon me, and Jamison goes out. 
That's the third straight foul that Lewis missed in pressure situations. So McIntyre, Buckner, Wooney, Christie back in, and Whiteman. The lineup for Clemson, down two. Buckner driving, no basket. No basket. Foul is on Lewis. That's four on him. Quincy Lewis picks up his fourth. Buckner knows if they're going to win, it has to be him to win. He takes a nice first step, was fouled before the shot. We'll go to the line. Are they in the Super Bowl? Yes, they are, yeah. So he goes to the line for two foul shots. Buckner shoots two. 72% from the line. Greg Buckner, the team leader. This Clemson Tiger team. 4.17 to go in the second overtime. Buckner missing that one, trying to gather himself again here. Every shot critical. He won't tire. He's averaging 33 minutes a game, so he's used to playing a lot of basketball. Makes the second. One point game, 22 points for Greg Buckner. Seven points above his season average. Coming up big in the big game. Charles Thomas. Jackson is his winner. They don't want Wendell to shoot. I was surprised he took the shot from outside before. Bobby Jackson, they want him to shoot. That's a three. 85 to 81, 34 points for Bobby Jackson. If Bobby Jackson isn't an All-American, I don't know basketball. All Big Ten, all defensive Big Ten. Lewis with a nice step in to grab that pass. Quincy Lewis. Lewis who missed the free throw that gave Christie the chance with the basket that sent it into the first overtime for Clemson. Makes a big play there. It's too early to be cute. They got to play their game, Minnesota. I mean by being cute, not to be working the clock this early. 3.20 to go, second overtime. It's batted away from Lewis. He lets it go out of bounds. It goes off the hands of Clemson. Lewis played that smartly, protecting it. McIntyre was going to go back and try and steal it there. Three thirteen to go. Christie goes out for Clemson. Jacobson comes in for Lewis for Minnesota. Code McIntyre, Weidman, Rooney, and Buckner the lineup for Clemson. Need to stop here, Tigers. Big time stop. Jacobson. Missed it entirely an air ball from Jacobson, who's really gone sour after being hot shooting the threes in the first half. Well, 3 6 to go, second OT. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. You know, he's good from out there, and he, that's his game. He had to let it go. He's at 4 of 12 now from downtown, and just John Cole, Buckner, watched by Jacobson. McIntyre. Wide three. Code in the corner over Charles Thomas. James rebounding. Charles Thomas just bothered him enough with a hand in his face. Jackson, 2.26 to go. College kids can't turn it on and turn it off. Once you go to the relay game or a clock game like this, you lose your momentum. When it's mathematically in your favor, fine, but you're in a two-possession game here. You need another basket. Under 10, down to seven. Jacobson, down to four. Jackson, well short, an air ball. Grabbed by Charles Thomas, and a foul call. Consultation by the officials. They don't want to blow one here. Ball went out of bounds. They, they said the ball goes to Minnesota. They're wondering now whether the shot clock went off before the play was made. Of course, that, that last shot did not catch iron. Right, exactly right. Possession arrow belongs to Clemson at this point. Let's take a look at it here. Watch the shot clock. Here's a shot. He forced it. He only had four seconds. He had to put it up. He didn't. It's an air ball. Right. And it, Thompson had a piece of it. Then it was knocked out of bounds by Clemson. Out of his hands. Now they'll call both coaches together. When you have the, a situation like this, they'll explain it to both coaches. You don't just talk to one coach. So the three referees are now speaking to Rick and to Clem. 
Well, upcoming while they sort this out, right from here, it'll be Iowa State, UCLA, and from out west, St. Joe's and Kentucky still ahead. Lots of exciting tournament action. Should have been a new 35 clock. The ball didn't hit anything. An air ball. We had that similar play at the other end back late in right. regulation. Um, I, I personally think it's a good call. I think the horn went off before the foul was committed going out of bounds. Yeah, it didn't touch the rim. There's no argument about that. Yeah. That's the way we called it at the time. A total air ball. You'll see that Charles Thomas, 34, gets a hand on it. McIntyre knocked it out of bounds, but evidently went off the hands of Thomas. And it is Clemson ball. Four-point game, Minnesota. 154 to go. This is Buckner. Code in the paint. And he travels. They get too many head and shoulder fakes. We call it mambo fakes. By giving the head and shoulder fakes, he pulled his foot. 19 turnovers. Clemson has to be more aggressive defensively here. Even double team on Jackson to create the clock. Uh... Charles Thomas. McIntyre sticking to him like glue. Forces him back to the perimeter. Jackson, 13 seconds on the shot clock. Good pick up there by Weidman. He read that pass, got a hand on it. They won't get a new clock. They'll stay at eight. Coach Clem is telling everybody eight seconds, eight seconds. 20 on the game clock. Nice double screen for Jackson. Charles Thomas. Thomas forcing a shot. Iron only. Good rebound by James. He gets it back outside. Now they'll spread out. Now they go what you call a B pat and a delay pat. They'll spread out wide. Down to a minute. Second overtime. Four point Minnesota lead. You almost got a trap out there. You can't let them take 34 seconds off again. Because we're looking at a two-possession game, a four-point spread. Down to 10, down to 7. Jackson's pull-up jumper. Oh, man, oh, man, can that guy Wow. Do? Lift up the world, Jackson. Lift up the world. 36 points in a six-point game. McIntyre. Need a basket here, big. Buckner for three. No go for him. Picked up by Jacobson. That's the first time Jacobson didn't shoot the whole game. <laughs> that's right. And Buckner fouled him. And that's five on Greg Buckner. What a night for that team leader. I got to give him a hand. He's played Especially magnificent. Especially the second half. I mean, he was brilliant in the second half. He leaves with five fouls. The junior from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. With everything he could do, 22 points, two rebounds. <laughs> 87 to 81, 23.2. Sam Jacobson at the line. He has 28 points. Jacobson. Jackson has been the scoring star despite struggling with his threes in the second half. Jacobson shoots, shoots about 61%. He needs to be farther back with somebody, uh, you know, standing on top of him. Tim, that's a big one here because it makes it three possession. You come down, hit two threes, you still need another and possession. And he gets it. Now it's a seven-point spread. The junior from Cottage Grove, Minnesota. Looks like Taps. Tap City. 29 points for him. Three-point try by McIntyre. Missed. Weidman battles for the rebound. 88 to 81. Code in and out on his three. Jackson rebounding and stepped on the line. Clemson has the ball with 8.2 left. And Minnesota is going to be glad to get to the locker room. What a battle from the Tigers of Clemson. Coach Clem Haskins never lost his composure. Even when they slipped down, he kept it calm on his bench. McIntyre, what a fighter. A three for him. Terrell McIntyre closes to four with 4.2 left. 17 points for Terrell McIntyre. We'll be back in a moment. 
Jim Ryan and Al McGuire in San Antonio and Minnesota. They can't breathe yet. 4.2 to go, a four-point game. They ought to be out of here and in the locker room, but Clemson says, no way, Jose. You got to finish it up here in San Antonio. McIntyre hit a three to bring it to four points. The scrappy Clemson team forcing overtime. Tony Christie shot at the buzzer. Second overtime. Here we are with 4.2 left. Get the ball in the Thomas or Jackson's hands, one or the other. Jacobson to Charles Thomas, and McIntyre nails him immediately. Got one second off the clock. That's four on McIntyre. Charles gotta give, Thomas will go to the line. Tim, you got to give him credit. They really played hard. They were credit to the ACC, and Rick Bonds did a magnificent job. He's taken to me not great material and made it a great team no doubt Barnes a Naismith uh, candidate coach of the year award one of 15 coaches in that category he's got an outstanding job he started 20 games at George Mason at Providence and here at Clemson in his third year at Clemson a record of 56 and 33 Charles Thompson at the line for Minnesota 89 to 84 five points for him Clemson took a 12-point win streak, beat Kentucky early in the season. McIntyre at the buzzer, and Minnesota has prevailed. It was not easy, it was not pretty, but 90 to 84 in double overtime. They finally defeat the number four seeds, Clemson. Eric Harris had to sit out much of the second half after his shoulder injury. May not be back. We'll find that out. But without him, a starting guard, they have prevailed, and they await now the winner of Iowa State and UCLA. That'll be next year from San Antonio. And the winner between those two on Saturday heads to the Final Four. Greg Buckner, 21 points, 7 of 9 from the field. Chevrolet player of the game for Clemson. Bobby Jackson, 36 points, a career high, nine rebounds, 12 of 13 from the free throw line, 11 of 20 from the field. A brilliant, brilliant night for the very calm and cool Bobby Jackson. Minnesota moves on to the Elite Eight, 90 to 84 over Clemson. And Pat O'Brien will be coming back from New York after this message and a word from your local station.